Hey everyone, James here from TDB bringing you another episode. Today I am going to be talking about a couple different things. Um, I will be talking a little bit about boring tea and a way to sort of spice it up or make things more interesting. A um, couple ways you can do that uh, just to kind of how you brew um, as well as just talking about a tea uh, and that tea as you might expect kind of falls into that category of tea that I found to be um, not super dull, but definitely a little bit duller than the average ripe. Uh, I'm going to be using this big blue pot today. That is the 2020, uh, 2020 uh, Munghai Tea Factory Dai uh, Ripe 8592. Um, I actually picked this tea up uh, in Malaysia when I was there last year in Penang um, at the Dai store. And for me, Dai is reliable. And so I went into that store. Um, and to be clear, this is not a purchase I regret at all. Um, and I was looking at the tea and this tea had been marketed as bestseller and it was something like 13 or $14. Um, and so I said, why not? I mean, it's Dai, it's reliable. Um, I am going to probably get what I pay for, obviously. Uh, it's not like uh, I expect this to be a super high-end Dai particularly, but um, yeah, it's 8592. It's a blend I probably haven't had with any regularity uh, since I finished off a cake uh, back when Denny and I had an office. So that would have been like, um, it could have been even pre-TDB, uh, but probably somewhere around 2012, 2013. So not a recipe I've necessarily uh, gone to super often, um, but I do drink a uh, dye a fair amount because it's dye. It's reliable, uh, especially when it comes to ripe. Um, and so, uh, what I have found is that the tea is fine, uh, but I have definitely found it to be a bit boring. Um, part of that is it gives out pretty fast. So the way I drink these ripes is I'm kind of slowly drinking it, uh, throughout the day. I initially serve, um, a mug and a half or so, uh, for my wife in the morning, and then I'll continue to drink from those same leaves, uh, using this big blue pot and brewing fairly casually. Um, so... Uh, I, I found that the tea gave out a little bit faster than what I'm used to uh, as far as these teas go. Um, but I did find one way uh, to make the tea more interesting, and that is to amp up the leaf to water ratio. And I think that's probably a good way to go about that, especially when you're running into a tea that's not quite interesting enough or strong enough. I think you might consider doing the opposite if you have a tea that's strong enough but kind of lacking in different nuance you could scale back the leaf. For me, I kind of up this leaf, tea leaf between uh, 20 to 30 percent. So today I'm going pretty hard. I'm using 12 grams. I'd say normal is eight and a half to nine grams for uh, when I am brewing in this. And I do think the tea is significantly more interesting. It's already been brewing pretty well uh, for a while. Um, and it just kind of gives you more body, uh, gives you more uh, texture and that kind of thing. So cheers. It's got a nice, rich, uh, creamy body. I would still say this tea is pretty simple, uh, all things considered. I'm uh, gonna brew another steep right here. Uh, 8592, uh, the recipe, we'd expect it to have some pretty large leaves in it. Uh, the nine stands for kind of leaf grade, which is leaf size. Nine is uh, the highest, so this is uh, definitely kind of a large leaf recipe um, as far as those go. Uh, you can run into kind of a famous version uh, of older ripe. I think Yeon actually sold that for a bit. Um, um, yeah, so it's a recipe that I, I'm not like super well versed in, not as well as like 7572 or 7262, which tend to be kind of the more classic ones. But you know, for a reasonable price, I, th I think it's definitely kind of a nice sort of office daily drinker. So, and I think the problem with um, that a lot of people will have uh, in terms of what will make a tea a daily drinker and what won't is just what you will find personally interesting. And I think that's why daily drinkers are so so much uh, kind of a personal choice is uh, is if you one person, you might even think one tea is better than the other. But if that tea is uh, doesn't pass the speed test, perhaps because it's not interesting enough, perhaps the inferior tea uh, in your estimate might be a better, uh, kind of regular daily drinker. And maybe that's the better buy. Uh, so there's a lot that can go into it. Uh, and for me, at least, uh, this tea, uh, is definitely not going to be a repurchase. Uh, but, uh, for the price, I mean, it was certainly a very good value and I'm getting through the cake and I'm getting through it even faster, uh, when I'm brewing it with 12 or 13 grams, uh, per session. 
Um, and it's nice that I don't have to do anything wild, like start blending it with other teas and things like that, which probably would have been the next step. Uh, maybe blend it with some tippier material just to, you know, amp up the intensity a bit. Uh, so here we go. Cheers. This is like a super, uh, super uh, standard. It's just very woody, uh, very much kind of a good example of the category of tea. Uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't quite have like anything like super interesting. I, I think maybe the counterpoint example on the other side of the thing is like the Golden Needle White Lotus, which just has really strong richness uh, to it, especially in those initial brews when you're uh, getting all those tips. And I think that's the tea that initially for me at least, held my attention uh, quite a bit. And then uh, my estimation of the tea did fall off a little bit uh, over time. This tea on the other hand is just kind of like big and broad uh, and solid. I mean, uh, not a tea that I think will uh, age a lot more, but you know, just a very standard dye. And I think with the extra leafage, it provides a little bit of extra longevity, a little bit extra body. Uh, this is not a tea that's going to bite back a lot. So the other thing you can do is, of course, push that brew time uh, a bit more too. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you have experience kind of amping up or amping down leaf to water ratios. Uh, the downside of this, of course, is that uh, you are consuming more leaf, so it could be a little more caffeinated. A tea like this the, the has a broader leaf, so you would expect it to potentially have a little bit less caffeine. So there's certain interactions that could sort of counteract uh, each other uh, to some extent. Um, so yeah, uh, I think in terms of rating, this tea is probably a 5.3, which is a little bit on the low end. But for me, again, uh, obviously, uh, here's my take here. And you might be able to tell, but I have drunk through probably about 75% of it or so. So definitely getting towards the end of this. And at that ratio, I'll probably be just like another week and a half or so before I am uh, totally done with this tea. Uh, another thing to add to, I bought this tea in Malaysia. doesn't necessarily have a lot of components of Malaysia storage. I think that's one thing to note is that, uh, especially when you go into a dye store uh, in Asia or something like that, does not mean that they've been storing the tea there uh, for kind of the extent of its life. So if you were to buy like a 2007 tea from this uh, dye store, uh, you would expect it to be legitimate. You would not expect it to have been stored in Malaysia or in that particular store uh, for the extent of the 16 years. Uh, just a small tip for those that uh, have the uh, pleasure of uh, traveling out there. Uh, diary stores really have gone gotten all over the place in terms of like major cities uh, in East and Southeast Asia. Okay, well, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you guys do uh, to kind of mix up uh, the tea, teas that you find to be a little boring um, and ways that you can uh, do it. Let me know if you amp the ratio up or, or if you found any other uh, kind of solutions. So thank you all for tuning in. I will see you all next time.